Goedie, Mulweni, goeie dag, doe my lang. I am Professor Delenka Potters, Acting Executive Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, the Built Environment and Technology at Nelson Mandela University. Our Acting Deputy Dean is Dr. Sue Petratos, and we are assisted by Ms. Charlene Dale in the Dean's Office. The rest of our staff, Directors of School and Heads of Department, will be introduced to you at various events over the next few weeks. We have supplemented this Dean's Welcome with a welcome from each of our four schools in a video format. These will be available on our YouTube channel. To learn more about our faculty, you can also view our website, ebet.mandela.ac.za. Getting back to this word of welcome, it is my pleasure to welcome you as a student in our faculty. Our ethos in this faculty is to solve problems and contribute to making the world a better place. We are excited to start this journey with you and equip you to be able to do the same. We offer recognized academic qualifications with an emphasis on collaborating with employers to ensure that our students are ready for the future world of work. Being a student became a bit more complicated after the emergence of COVID. I want to reassure you that we are ready to accommodate whatever is required to make your studies happen in 2022. As a faculty, we are primarily in a blended mode of both online and on-campus activities. Each school and department will be unique in terms of what their requirements are for lectures, practicals, tutorials, tests and exams. It is possible that you might have different requirements for each of the modules that you are registered for. These requirements will be communicated clearly by your department on all of our online platforms and you will receive direct communication from your lecturers. I must emphasize the importance of observing COVID protocols like wearing your mask and sanitizing when you are on campus for academic activities. We must all contribute to ensure a safe learning environment for each other. I want to leave you with this quote from Mandela which says, Education is the most powerful weapon with which to change the world. I hope it will serve as a constant theme throughout your studies at Nelson Mandela University. I look forward to seeing and meeting you in the passages and social spaces on campus. I wish you well with your studies and preparation for the future world of work. If you do have questions, you are most welcome to email Ms. Charlene Dale at charlene.dale at mandela.ac.za. Please remember to view your welcome video from your school on our university's YouTube channel. This is already available. Our Vice Chancellor's welcoming address will be available for viewing from Saturday morning. Thank you. Welcome to School of Information Technology. I am Dr. Sue Petratos and I'm the director of the school. I will focus most of my talk on the parents, guardians, friends and other support that is here for our students. I will explain a little later why. Let's look at why you are here today. Well, you are here because your children chose a career focused qualification in IT. This means that they will get a very practical orientated learning experience with a solid theoretical foundation. Or maybe they wanted to do a more broad based qualification with other non computer modules such as maths and accounting. However, they landed with a second choice for various reasons. Or maybe you are here because you think that your kids will get good jobs in IT, such as the ones following. Well, these are jobs that you know are sought after. Whatever the reason is that you think you are here, I want to right here, right now, burst that bubble and ensure you that our students are here for much, much more. They are here to change the world. 
These are the jobs that are waiting for them beyond the next three years. But why am I showing you all of this? Well, because we all have dreams and aspirations. As parents, your dreams and your children's dreams may not be the same. But as great parents, you are here to support them and help them through the next three to five years. And that is why I'm focusing on you, the parents, the guardians and other support structures. I want you to understand what it is that we do for your children and what it is that we expect from your children in order to ensure that they can achieve their dreams. Those jobs that don't even exist in our minds yet, that is what your children want for themselves. The first step to achieve their dream is to complete the qualification they have registered for. This could be a higher certificate, a diploma or a degree such as the BIT. This diagram shows you the minimum years to complete the qualification as well as possible further studies such as the advanced diploma or a BIT honours all the way to a PhD. The highest certificate in ICT in user support services is a qualification that equips the learner with the necessary skills to provide first level technical support. It serves also as an entry level qualification into the field of ICT. It is recognized and career based. This means that your child can go and work after a year. Or alternatively, if the minimum requirements are met, the student may continue on to a diploma. For a continuation into a diploma, a minimum of 60% as an average is required. Please note that this is, admission is also subject to departmental selection. The diploma has three specialization areas, support services, software development, and communication networks. Software development equips the student to effectively solve business-related problems, concentrating on analysis and design and programming, while communication networks equips the student to design, build and maintain various forms of networking, as well as having a good grounding in digital electronics. For support services, the student will be able to provide first-level technical support to end users in a help desk or on-site capacity. This is also a very sought after position, considering how many computers there are in this world and how many of them break. The Bachelor of Information Technology is a new qualification and I want to spend a little bit of time explaining how we actually got to this qualification. So on this graph, you will be able to see that somebody who is studying a BCom really focuses a lot on the business side and the theoretical side of um, the qualification. A BSc, on the other hand, is very heavily scientifically focused and also theoretical. Our diploma has got a very high percentage of practical involved and also technology is at the center of it. However, if you look at the white gap in the middle, that is exactly where we have decided to pitch the BIT. It covers a little bit of commerce, a little bit of science, and is also technology based. The BIT allows a student to become an information technology professional that can implement, maintain, and support enterprise systems. These graduates are seen as user advocates. They are the interface between various computing disciplines and our technology integrators. As you know, we have moved to a different mode of learning and teaching. Many say that we are starting this year with uncertainty. I say we are not. We have learned many lessons in 2020 and this year we are incorporating all the lessons learned to avoid the same mistakes. I'm going to spend a little bit of time to talk about the blended learning and teaching approach. However, as I go through it, you will notice that it varies very little from a normal classroom situation. So for blended learning, you would be required to prepare by reading work beforehand or by watching a video. 
as you can see, this is exactly the same as it would have been in a face-to-face -face situation. Your lessons are probably the place where you will notice the biggest difference. Since a lesson will be able to be done synchronous at a specific time with a lecturer, but it will be online. Or, alternatively, a lesson could be online in your own time, where you would be watching a video or recording that a lecturer has provided to you. Assignments, feedback and assessment will be based on these lessons. This is very important that you maintain continuous uh, work throughout the year. If you get uh, stuck with something or you have a problem, please notify your lecturer and communicate with them early so that you can get feedback from them and you can continue on the right path. Continuous learning and teaching is followed during um, this blended learning approach. You will be required to work consistently throughout the year. I want to repeat that, consistently throughout the year. You will not be able to cram or binge study as all online activities are monitored and form part of your final mark. You will be given more information about each requirement on the modules in your first class. However, again, I want to emphasize that you will not be able to cram. You need to work throughout the year. So this means that our children, your, your children, our students will need time to study whether they are studying at res or at home, they are going to need to spend a lot of time in front of their computers doing their work. So to support our students, we need to understand the online environment and we need to understand that it is different. Students need lots of resources. They will need lots of screen time and they will need quiet spaces for studying. So when you see them in front of their computer or you see them with earphones in their ears, it does not mean that they are listening to music or that they are playing a game. Literally, the students are studying in a different environment. They have now entered complete digital age where they are studying using all their devices. Parents, please keep an eye on the students. Show interest in their progress and encourage them on a day-to-day -day basis, especially on those days when they are feeling down. It is a different environment where they will not be interacting with their friends and other students on campus as a normal situation would be. And this could cause the students to feel a little bit depressed and a little bit alone. So please, parents, keep an eye on them. Make sure that they are OK. And if they do have problems, encourage them to come and talk to us about it. Their success will secure a better future for themselves as well as for their families. Students will have to manage their time very well and must find a way to balance life. Note that balancing life means studying, exercising, sleeping, as well as your house chores. Students, I'm not letting you off the hook with that one. You still need to do your house chores, but please ensure that all your deadlines are met before you get distracted with other house chores and other duties. You recognize this quote? Well, I want to now introduce you to some of the people who will help you to get this done. Our Deputy Dean is Professor Delenka Potas, and we are very proud to have someone from our school at Senior Management at the institution. As I've mentioned, I'm Dr. Sue Petratos, and I'm the Director of the school. I am supported by four heads of department. Mrs. Annelise Dupriere is the HOD for Applied Technologies and Mr. Rudy Haramser is the Head of Department for Software Engineering. Professor Kerry Lynn Thompson is the Acting HOD for Network Engineering and Professor Lynn Futcher is the Acting HOD for IT Management and Governance. Our administrators are also faces that you need to remember. Mrs. Farron Foti will assist you in securing meetings with course coordinators and HODs. Mr. Jason Atau assists you with registration matters and Mrs. Ntungela assists you with meetings with myself and the HODs. This is also your point of contact for six certificates. So please make sure that you know what these people's um, email addresses are so that you can contact them 
As mentioned, we are not always working from campus. Parents, these are also the people that you need to take note of as um, these are the contact people that um, will put you in touch with the correct HOD. Um, the rest of the lecturers will be introduced to the students at orientation. Some tips for success. Besides having support from your families, friends, and um, you know your support structure at home, we also have a very good support structure at the institution. Our success coaches for students are the first point where a student needs to go to if they are having trouble with time management, with study methods, and so on. Each faculty has got their own student success coach, and therefore they can get, give uh, good attention to the students. Supplemental instruction is additional classes that student can, students can attend for modules which have a high failure, failure rate. Online learn site is Moodle and here you will be able to get your notes, your slides and links to other useful websites. Our Moodle sites for each uh, module is also used for communicating with the students. Please attend online classes and do your practicals regularly. If you do not, you will fall behind and it will be difficult to catch up to such a point that it could actually lead you to not passing your classes. Engage with your lecturers when you have problems. Please also note that we have got interns to assist you on campus. So if you are booking a lab um, and you're coming to work on a PC there, there are going to be students, sorry, there are going to be interns that can assist you with any questions that you've got with regard to your um, work, your content, your practical that you need to do. Time management, as I've mentioned earlier, is also very important. Um, the campus clinic, as well as other societies and sport on campus, will keep you um, well balanced. So please make sure that you go to the website and that you know um, of activities that you, can, that you can participate in. We also have tools such as a student portal for student information. And here you can um, access your progress report. Parents also please note that a student has got access to their marks at all times. They can show you their marks on this um, student um, portal by accessing their progress report. Ask them to show you their mark. If their mark has not yet been entered, then um, the lecturer is obviously still busy with marking, but um, do not believe them when they say that there are no marks yet. Ask them to show you. You want to physically see their marks. And I'm not doing this because um, we don't trust our students, but I'm really doing this to encourage you in this situation where your students will be more home-based to also participate in their education. From the student portal, students can also access their fees and see what the balance is on that. There's also adverts placed for books that are, go on sale and students can easily exchange information and get um, cheaper secondhand books. For those who are not necessarily digitally uh, skilled at this point in time, the Get Digi Ready uh, site has got a lot of videos that get you ready for the digital classroom. So I want to encourage you to watch those videos, learn what it is when we're talking about VPN and what it is to, um, you know, link to the university's Wi-Fi, how to access your Moodle site. All of those things are available on the Get Digi Ready site. Of course, we also have the Mandela Uni app that you can download onto your phones as well as a map buddy for those of you who are coming back to campus. It is useful to find your way around the campus. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. So now that you know that you can get the impossible done, you have got to work. You have got the tips. You have got to now put in the effort from your side because this change can only happen if it starts with changing yourself and empowering yourself to make these changes. This slide shows, um, you know, how you can connect with us on various social media platforms. I want to encourage you to definitely join our Facebook page. A lot of information is shared on this page, including registration as well as orientation. And that is very important for you at this point in time. What is left for me now is just to wish you well for your studies 
and again to welcome you on board and welcome you into the School of IT. Um, we are very pleased that you are joining our family and we look forward to seeing how you go forward in your life, in your studies and how you change the world. Welcome to the School of Architecture. Hello, I'm Bob and Vergis, the director of the School of Architecture. The School of Architecture comprises of two departments, namely the Department of Architecture and the Department of Architecture Technology and Interior Design. Between the two departments, three primary qualifications are offered. These include degrees in the fields of architecture, architecture technology and interior design. We will elaborate further on these over the upcoming slides. A question many people ask, what is the difference between architecture and architecture technology? At a basic level, an architect is a person who designs the buildings and the built environment, and in many cases also supervises their construction. While architecture technologists work in the science of architecture, building design and construction, they work closely with architects and support to turn the architect's concept into a reality in the completed construction. A unique aspect of the School of Architecture is the emphasis on studio-based learning. The studios are run by a professional team of registered architects who are dedicated to learning and teaching. Studio-based teaching culture encourages learners to work together in a studio. A large part of learning is through drawing, building models, both physical and digital, to understand spatial relationship and design building form. Many of these studio projects are real-life projects and include collaborative efforts of significance that would be experienced in the working world. We have two highly skilled and dedicated academic staff as HODs. Mr. Andrew Palferman is head of the Department of Architecture and Mr. Hai Sintonka is head of the Department of Architectural Technology and Interior Design. The Department of Architecture the ethos behind the Department of Architecture is to critically engage with the making of humane architecture with a balanced theoretical and pragmatic approach shaped by the social, economic and ecological informants with a locally rooted but globally aspiring architecture. The Bachelor of Architectural Studies program is a three-year professional degree. Once successfully completed, it can lead to registration with South African Council of Architectural Profession, SACAP, as an architectural technologist. The BAS program acts as foundation for entering the BAS Honours degree in architecture. This is a one-year degree and fits into the final year. The fifth and final year of architecture is a Master's of Architecture professional degree. This can lead to the registration with SACAP as a professional architect. Admission requirements to study architecture include a minimum of 55% for pure maths, an AS score of 370, and the submission of a creative portfolio of work. This portfolio comprises of drawings and sketches, and other creative endeavors are stipulated by the department. Successful applicants are required to appear for an interview and present the portfolio to the department personnel before final acceptance to the course is granted. The process of design is enriched through a real life project, which is both invigorating and challenging. This rewarding process demands dedication, time and commitment. The design build project handled by the second year studio was an innovative project successfully designed raised to funds, built and handed over a crash to an NGO working in the Warmer Township, Port Elizabeth. The department and the school creates various opportunities for collaborative and engagement projects. The BA's Honours Studio handled a successful collaborative project with the French architecture students from University of Ensa, Paris. The Department of Architectural Technology and Interior Design. Architecture technologists are concerned with the development of buildings. 
This may include its design, the design of parts thereof, the presentation of the design, and the assembly of various elements. The field of expertise of the qualified architectural technologist is mainly construction methods, materials, and the preparation of drawings and graphic presentations. The Diploma in Architectural Technology is a three-year diploma qualification and can lead to registration with the South African Council of Architectural Profession as an architectural technologist. Graduates then have a choice to study further for either an advanced diploma in architectural technology that focuses on technology or decide on advanced diploma in architectural technology that focuses on design. The later option enables the learner to further their studies as part of the Bachelor of Architecture Study program. Admission requirements to architectural technology include a minimum of either 45% for pure maths, 60% for maths lit, or 45% for technical maths. An AS score of 330 is required if you have maths or technical maths at school, and an AS score of 345 is required if you have maths lit. Similar to architecture, the submission of a creative portfolio of work is required as stipulated by the department. This includes successful applicants to appear for an interview and present their portfolio to the department personnel before final acceptance to the course is granted. With both architectural and architectural technologies qualifications, after successfully completing the degrees, graduates are required to two years work experience under a registered professional architect. After completing the work experience and a professional exam, candidates may register as professionals with SACAP according to the degree they have obtained. The role of the interior designer is to create interiors with the spatial qualities that are habitable for people on all levels of experience, aesthetically, functionally, psychologically, and economically. The aim is to create comfort and efficiency, spaces that answer to the needs of the client. Therefore, the interior designer is concerned with the layout, finishes, details, furnishings, and lighting of such spaces in new buildings or as part of refurbishment projects. Diploma in Interior Design is a three-year diploma program. Learners who successfully complete this qualification can then continue with a one-year advanced diploma in interior design. Once you have graduated with your advanced diploma in interior design, you are able to register with the African Institute of Interior Design Professionals. Admission requirements to interior design either an AS score of 310 if you have maths or technical maths at school and an AS score of 325 is required if you have maths lit. Again, the submission of a creative portfolio of work is required and an interview to present the portfolio to the department personnel before the final acceptance is granted is a required procedure. Employment opportunities for interior designers exist with interior design firms, architectural practices, furniture manufacturers, and supplies and property developers, or as self-employed consultants. All of us programs in the school are accredited by the Council of Higher Education, CHE, and registered by the South African Qualifications Authority. In addition, the school has an excellent track record with the validating boards. Both architecture and architecture technology programs are validated by the South African Council for the Architectural Profession as well as the Commonwealth Association of Architects. Diverse employment opportunities in the architecture and interior design fields include work at architectural practices, furniture designers and fabricators, property developers, or avenues into urban design, landscape architecture, and 3D visualization. Nelson Mandela University's teaching philosophy is recognized as humanizing pedagogy. It is about dislodging outdated theories and narrow-minded preconceptions of teaching, learning, and human engagement in order to stimulate an inquiring approach to education. To this end, we have adapted a learning and teaching approach that makes use of multimodal, flexible, remote learning processes. This includes multiple online platforms and software that ensures students have constant access to all the course content and lecturers. 
If you have any further queries regarding this presentation or admissions, please take note of the following personnel who will be willing and able to answer all queries. Alternatively, you can send any queries to the displayed email addresses or view our department Facebook or website pages for more information. Best of luck for 2022 admissions and thank you for listening. Thank you for your time and listening. Good day. My name is Wayne Dry, Director of the School for the Built Environment and Civil Engineering in the Faculty of Engineering, the Built Environment and Technology at the Nelson Mandela University. Today we will be talking about programs on offer within the School of the Built Environment and Civil Engineering. The School of the Built Environment and Civil Engineering consists of four departments namely Building and Human Settlement Development, which is managed as an HOD by Ms. Emma Ayesu Koranteng, the Department of Civil Engineering, which has the Head of Department as Professor Stephen Ekolu, the Department for Construction Management with Head of Department Mr. Chris Allen, and the Department for Quantity Surveying with the Head of Department as Mr. Roy Cumberledge. I will shortly go through each and every one of the departments and elaborate a little bit on the programs on offer within the departments. Students would well be advised by the respective Head of Departments uh, in a little more depth on what the different programs entail. For Department Building and Human Settlement Development, the qualifications on offer within the department are as follows. There is a Diploma Building on offer that is a three, year, three years of full-time study, an Advanced Diploma Construction Management, as well as an Advanced Diploma Quantity Surveying, both of which follow on the Diploma Building certain criteria before students would gain access into those programs and this is on offer over one year of full-time study. Within the Department of Building and Human Settlement Development there also is a Bachelor of Human Settlement that is a four year of full-time study. The qualifications on offer within the Department of Construction Management are as follows. The department offers a Bachelor of Science in Construction Management, which is taken over three years of full-time study. A Bachelor of Science in Honours in Construction Management, as well as a Bachelor of Science in Honours in Construction Health and Safety Management, both which are on offer over one year of full-time study. The department also offers a Master's of Science in Construction Management where the student is expected to do, to do uh, research. The department also has on offer a Master's of Science in the Built Environment which is coursework masters, coursework masters that consist of modules as well as a treatise as part of their research. Some of the programs on offer within the coursework masters is project management, construction management, and construction health and safety management. The Department of Construction Management also offers a doctoral qualification in, in the form of a PhD in construction management with research. We're looking at the Department of Quantity Surveying and the qualifications on offer in, within that department. You'll notice that there is a Bachelor of Science in Construction Economics, which takes the form of a three-year full-time study. Bachelor of Science in Honours in Quantity Surveying, which is a one-year of full-time study, which follows on the three years of full-time study. The department also offers a Master's of Science in Construction Economics research, as well as a Master's of Science in the Built Environment, 
in which coursework would be the emphasis where modules are being presented together with, with a treatise or research. And the programs on offer there would be facilities management, as well as property economics and valuation. The Department of Quantity Surveying also offers a doctoral qualification in the form of a PhD in construction economics research. When looking at the fourth qualification within the School of the Built Environment and Civil Engineering, we now look at the qualifications on offer within the Civil Engineering Department. The Department offers the following qualification in, in the form of a Bachelor's of Engineering Technology in Civil Engineering, which is a three years of full-time study. A Bachelor of Engineering Technology Honours in Civil Engineering is a one-year full-time study with the first intake that takes place in this year, namely 2022. And also on offer within the Civil Engineering Department is a Master's of Engineering Civil Research which can be taken over either part-time or full-time study. One of the aspects that the departments within the School for the Built Environment and Civil Engineering is extremely proud of is the fact that the qualifications are accredited by South African Council for the Project and Construction Management Professions or the SACPCMP, the South African Council for the Quantity Surveying Profession or the SACQSP, as well as in the in the case of the Department of Quantity Surveying, their program is also uh, accredited by the RICS or the Royal Interchart Institute for Quantities for, for Chartered Surveyors. When taking into account the civil engineering department, we can also proudly say that the qualification in civil engineering is accredited by the Engineering Council of South Africa or EXA. And once a candidate has concluded his studies, he can have professional registration with EXA as a PR tech eng or professional engineering technologist. The department also prides itself that it had received accreditation for the next for the next term in from the from EXA. With everything having been said in the aforementioned slides, it is my pleasure to welcome each and every one of you as a student within our school, where we trust that you will work towards the ethos of the faculty of problem solving and changing the world and making it a better place. As a student, you might be aware or you might have heard of the changes that had happened within the tertiary education space. With the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic, and the one thing that I can say is that we have made many plans and we are still looking at ways of being, of still being productive despite the pandemic. And I can assure each and every one of you, students and parents together, that the staff in the respective departments are engaging and they are forever looking at ways of ensuring the best interests of our students are at heart. Respective departments will, as they elaborate and as they speak to the students later on in the week, will advise on how the learning and teaching methods would be employed throughout this semester and year. There would be certain sectors that would be conducting full-on online teaching. There would be certain sect sectors where there would be a blended approach where a mixture of online and mask to mask teaching would take place. And there would be certain sections dependent on the size, class sizes where a full on mask to mask teaching would be employed. 
It is with this said that we can state that we can give the assurance that all COVID protocols are and would be adhered to during the 2022 academic year. And that the safety of all of you, our students, are our first priority. We therefore encourage you to contact us on the aforementioned or the email addresses that appear on the screen, as well as to watch the respective departmental videos that would be available on YouTube. I'm looking forward to meeting you as our students, our new students, in the corridors of our university, whereby we can engage and knowing that my door is at always at all times open for any of you to come and to request to request to ask for advice and to, to seek guidance. I thank you and wish you well in your studies 2022. Welcome to the School of Engineering at Nelson Mandela University. My name is Farouk Smith and I am the director of the School of Engineering. I want to first say well done for successfully completing your school career. The subjects that you have chosen at the exit level in high school will help us change the world because it allowed you into careers offered in the field of engineering. The engineering team consists of a group of people in different specialities and skills. The members of this team are engineers, technologists, technicians and artisans. All are important as they bring different levels of knowledge and skills to the engineering team. At the Nelson Mandela University, we focus on the preparation and technical education of the engineer and technologist. The School of Engineering consists of five departments. Each of these departments focuses on different fields of engineering, but they do have one thing in common, teaching you to solve problems in the field of engineering to improve people's lives. The suite of qualifications that you have chosen range between two higher certificate qualifications, four Bachelor of Engineering Technology qualifications and one Bachelor of Engineering qualification. On completion of your chosen qualification, you will be required to work in industry for a period of three to four years. Gaining relevant engineering experience in order to register with the Engineering Council of South Africa as a professional engineering technologist or as a professional engineer. Additionally, there are opportunities to further your studies up to the level of a doctorate. It is pretty much up to you as to how high you wish to progress. The sky is the limit. Mathematics and physics is a core component of all our qualifications and each one of you will be exposed to the relevant mathematics and physics applicable to your qualification. I would like to briefly introduce you to the various qualifications that you have chosen. You will also get a sense of what other students in School of Engineering will be doing. Some of these are offered only on a part-time basis to people working in industry, so some of it is not applicable to you. We offer a higher certificate in Mechatronic Engineering, and a higher certificate in renewable energy engineering which started in 2021. These qualifications are vocationally orientated which means that you gain very practical skills that you can use in the workplace and industry. The Bachelor of Engineering Technology in Electrical Engineering offers you the opportunities for a career that is both challenging and rewarding. The work and qualification include the bulk generation, distribution and utilization of electrical energy generated at power stations, the use of solar power to generate power in many dwellings and industries, 
the control of automated electrical systems, including robotics, the development and control of electric machines and vehicles, the very wide field of audio and video systems, and these are a small subset of electrical engineering. Now moving on to a graduate with the Bachelor of Engineering Technology in Industrial Engineering, will be able to go out into industry and focus on the development of concepts, designs and systems for manufacturing processes and services. The industries that you could work in range from um, automotive manufacturing plants to pharmaceutical production facilities to automate the architectural systems and again these are only to name a few, there are a lot more. The industrial engineering technologies is key in the development of efficient processes, quality assurance protocols and systems for all sectors. The Bachelor of Engineering Technology in Marine Engineering was introduced in 2018 as a completely new field of engineering at Nelson Mandela University. A marine engineer is responsible for the design, operation, maintenance and repair of all equipment on board any ocean going vessel above or below the water surface. Examples include small pleasure boats or yachts, large passenger cruise ships, cargo and oil tankers, oil drilling platforms and submarines. These vessels are made up of complex mechanical and automated systems such as propulsion mechanics, uh, electrical power generation systems, lubrication and fuel systems, water distillation systems and lightning and air conditioning systems. There are many more and this will be discussed during the course of your program. A Bachelor of Engineering Technology in Mechanical Engineering involves the design, development and manufacture of mechanisms, structures and building trusses, engineering tools, all types of vehicles and machines used in the manufacture of various products again to name a few. An understanding of the properties of all materials is a very important aspect of this very vast field. A professional engineering technologist will eventually specialize in areas such as automotive engineering, power plant engineering, the manufacture of composite engineering materials and many more. The Bachelor of Engineering in Mechatronics focuses on a combination of precision mechanical engineering, electronics and computer systems which are made up of mechanical components, electrical sensors, mechanical and electrical actuators and computer controllers. These need to be integrated into products and systems useful to man and society. In order to combine all these elements in an optimal way that is cost effective, flexible and with the highest performance, Megatronics engineers must have insight into each of these disciplines and you will be exposed to this during the course of your studies. All of these qualifications are endorsed by the Engineering Council of South Africa and the South African Maritime Safety Authority. These professional bodies ensure that the qualifications we offer are relevant and meet the standard for a graduate to register as a professional in the various engineering disciplines. This is of importance when you wish to work in the engineering profession nationally or internationally. It certainly opens up your horizons. All qualifications are also accredited by the Council on Higher Education and registered with the South African Qualifications Authority. Nelson Mandela University offers world-class degrees that is student-centric and fully accredited by the relevant educational bodies of South Africa. By registering at Nelson Mandela University, you have already started the journey to make a difference to your world. 
Contact us should you experience any difficulties in your studies or need more information. We look forward to seeing you in class and in the laboratories. Nelson Mandela University School of Engineering. We are here to guide you to the future of technology.